Welcome back to the Gentleman's Motor Racing Team. This episode, we're back on the Rally Mini and we're still working on windows. But this one's uh, slightly different. Right, windows on the rally car. The rules say that the front screen must be laminated. Uh, you're not allowed to have the old toughened windscreen for obvious reasons. Because when they shatter, A, you can't see out of them, uh, and also there's bits of glass everywhere. So they have to be laminated. That's an easy fix, isn't it? Because I think most windows or windscreens nowadays are laminated. Uh, you are allowed to run Perspex wherever you wish on, in, on the car. Now I say Perspex, but it could, that's a manufacturer's name. It could be Lexan or whatever. Um, but it has to be a shatterproof plastic. Minimum width or thickness, let me say, is four millimeters. Now you've seen the previous video where I modified the rear quarter light windows to fit uh, four mil Lexan in there. Not entirely sure if that's the right thing I should have done, so I am looking for another set of windows for the back. They never had glass in them anyway, um, so I'm just replacing them like for like. I only added piano hinges to give it that access behind the roll cage. But yeah, if I can find a set of glass rear windows, I will probably install those. Rear screen is toughened. It's an old heated toughened windscreen. You're allowed to have a toughened screen in the back. I think that's because you can't get laminated screens for the back, maybe, I don't know. Now, door glass is a different story. It doesn't matter what type of mini you've got, whether it be sliding glass or wind up windows, uh, they're all toughened glass and you're not allowed to run those. So there's two options. You can either replace them with Lexan, same thing, four mil. Uh, people that have wind up windows often replace them with a big sheet of that Lexan with like a little slidey side window. The whole idea is for the slidey window is not just to let air in and out, but being a rally car, you have to pass bits of paper in and out. Uh, so that's what they have those for. Um, or you have to fit a shatterproof film on the inside. Now the thickness of that shatterproof film, I can't remember. I don't, I didn't do my research before the video, um, but it's a certain micron thickness and what you do is you clean your glass off and you just basically stick it on the inside of your glass as if you were doing a wrap. If you don't want to fit plastic windows or you can't fit plastic windows because they're curved or whatever, you the only other thing that you're allowed to do is fit shatterproof film on the inside of the windows. And that's just like fitting a great big sticker to the inside. Now I have a history of not applying stickers very well. Um, in fact, we used to have a Mark 1, the red Mark 1 that we used to race off-road. If you ever go back and look at some of that video footage, you'll notice that it only has one door randle. Yes, I had a tantrum putting one of them on, ripped it off, threw it away, and, uh, and vowed never to do it again. However, so this is the first time that I had to apply a big sticker again. We did lots of research on the internet and uh, my chums that also go rallying gave me some really good advice about how to fit this film on the inside of the glass. First job really was to clean the glass thoroughly. Now this glass I bought off a geezer in Yarmouth uh, on the Isle of Wight and they were in the back of the shed. They were all covered in dust and everything else. And the main thing that I wanted to make sure was that there was no welding splats in the glass. Um, the, if my Mark I glass unfortunately is peppered with welding splats. Uh, and I'd, as much as I'd love to blame it on previous owners I can't it's my fault I've had that car since I was in my teens and you learn from your mistakes don't you so uh, I did find a couple of little bits in there uh, and using a 
and using like a Stanley knife scraper, I managed to scrape the little bits off, but it did leave little dents inside the, the glass, you know, craters almost. Uh, and that was to come back and haunt me later. But in the sterile environment of our kitchen, we cleaned it all down. Uh, I cleaned them off with window cleaner as well to make sure that was super clean. Um, made sure to say all the imperfections were off. The next thing is to cut the piece of film to the right shape. No, that's a lie, let me start again. So once all the glass was super clean, we laid them out, making sure that we were uh, about to put the stickers on the inside of the glass because it is quite possible that you could get slightly confused and put the film on the wrong side of the glass, so it'd be on the outside. Uh, ask me how I know that. Anyway, once you've worked that out, you cut the film out. Now everybody says that you should use a spray bottle with water and a bit of washing up liquid in it. Now the first time we did this, we had a little bit too much washing up liquid in the water that we were spraying on the glass. It didn't make bubbles and things like that, but it actually took a very long time for the film to stick to the glass. There was just too much washing up liquid. So we ditched all that, cleaned it all off, new bit of water in there with only a couple of drops of washing up liquid in there, uh, and it worked much better. So second attempt, you spray down the glass with the water, and you also spray down the, the film with water as well. Put the two on top of each other, sort of move it around to where you like it to be. And another top tip we saw was you spray the outside of the film now with the water. This means that when you apply the squeegee to the top, you're not going to scratch that film. If it was dry, you'd be going dry on dry, no lubrication, and you just might damage it. So spraying on the top allows you to move that squeegee around nice and smoothly and push all the water out. The other top tip that my mate Dean told me was the fact that you're chucking so much water in between the film and the glass. When you squeegee out, you are actually removing the last remnants of dust and dirt that may be left on the glass. You're basically washing it out. It doesn't matter how much water you put on there, you're gonna squeegee it out anyway. It doesn't matter, so more the merrier. Squeegee it all out to the outside. In theory, that's job done. But we noticed that where the glass is beveled at the outside, slightly rounded, capillary action was pulling the water back in. It was lifting up the film, and so no matter how much you squeegeed, you couldn't get the edge of the film to stick to the glass. And so no matter how much you squeegee, you couldn't get the edge of the film to stick to the glass. So you have to cut the film. Don't cut the film to the edge of the glass because where the glass is beveled, it, you still get that capillary action. You have to cut it in, maybe sort of two, three mil away from the edge of the glass. That then gives it a nice sharp edge before the bevel, the capillary action doesn't happen, and all of a sudden it sticks on there really nice. So once we've done that, we continue to squeegee. We're squeegeeing out any remnants of water we see, and also air bubbles. Air bubbles will appear, but because the the glue hasn't glued properly because of the water, you can actually push the bubbles all the way to the outside without damaging the film at all. Once that was done, we actually turned the glass upside down, so uh, onto a tea towel on the kitchen table, so the weight of the glass was pushing down on the film, and then we left that overnight, and in the morning, we were absolutely chuffed to bits with how clear and perfect that film looks. That was then, however, looking at it now, you can maybe just see a couple of little bits. There we go, look, there's a little bullet point there, look. There's one there, and there's one there. Now those are those little craters that I was talking about. Where the weld splat had landed, it literally melts the glass. Are you flat? So when you're welding, all those sparks fly up in the air, they land on the glass and they actually melt the glass. So when you look at it, you see what looks like a meteorite that's landed there, this little tiny speck of molten metal, and it's made a crater 
in the glass. Yes, using that scraper I can scrape that bit of metal off, but the crater still remains. And then that means that when you put the film on it, it doesn't quite stick uh, and you end up with the, with the film just lifting and it gets slightly bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we did that maybe sort of two weeks ago uh, and the glass is now, you know, it's fully dry. And I'm hoping that those craters don't get any bigger. Worst case scenario, I'm guessing I could just put a little pin brick in there and maybe squeeze it back down. I don't know. I've never had to do it before. So um, if you ever have to do this job, cleansliness, cleansli cleansliness, just make sure everything's clean when you're doing it. All right. And like everything else, take your time. So that's it. The glass was done. The doors are done. Oh, doors. I forgot about doors. Yeah, I sprayed the doors. Uh, I made a little bracket so that I could hang them up. All the research that I did said panels, you really need to spray them when they're hanging. Uh, that means that there's less dust going to fall on the, on the paint. However, I did make a bit of a, a, a mistake with my guide coat that I put on. It was a little bit too thick. Um, and so that's given me a bit of orange peel. So the paint on the doors is not ideal but it's a little bit orange peely. It's not the best. Sorry, the light in my garage is not amazing. I will make it into a studio one day. So fitting the glass to the nail painted doors was quite interesting. I went into the attic, dug out the chrome running strips that a, a, a Mark I, Mark II have, and boy, was it rusty. All the chrome had started to peel off it. It was looking a bit rank. So I decided, well, gone this far, let's buy new ones. So I went on to mini spares uh, and they had them. They weren't super expensive, stainless steel, which I thought would be really nice, but they are designed to only be used with the chrome push button. You know what I mean? The glass sliders, not the plastic ones. Which one have I got? I've got the driver rear push button one. <laughs> the rest, I've kind of had to wedge the plastic ones on. The reason they don't work is it's how it grips underneath. It, the, the top is all the same, you know, how, how it has a little pin that hold, that stops it from sliding. That all works, it fits the glass the same, but it's literally how the, um, how the button slides up and down the runner, basically how it grips it like this, it's just a different shape. Um, so I need to be on the lookout for another set of chrome ones. I know they're really expensive, um, but I'm, individually I might be able to pick them up. Or I know that Toonie actually did a, uh, an episode a while ago about some aftermarket ones. I might have to go back and watch that and, and see what he thinks and, and, you know, are they good enough? I'm sure they are. So the doors are on, the glass is in, and it all makes regulations for rallying, so that's perfect. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can help sponsor the team or this build in particular. One of them is a GoFundMe page where we're trying to raise sponsorship for the Rally Navigator seat. Thank you very much for everybody that's helped uh, raise some money towards that. We're, we're getting very, very close. The other one is we have a Patreon page. If you like additional footage or you like to see these videos up in advance, go and check that out. Um, I do chuck free stuff up there now and again, so just go and have a look, see what you think, and if you uh, if you feel you'd like to support the team that way, that's another option. If you do nothing at all and you enjoy this video, just smash the like button. Why should you do that? Well, if you smash the like button, it tells the algorithm that we exist, and then that means hopefully more people will see our YouTube videos, and then hopefully that will then help us be able to raise more sponsorship for our rally exploits so thank you very much right on that then that's the end of this episode what's coming next time well now i promised last time that this episode would be about wiring maybe we should make that next episode i promise i promise again there we go thank you very much see you next time